Ah, why is there a great big ball of fire in the sky? Why is it always in my eyes? I can't paint anything like this! Welcome back to the Red Ones Go Fast, the old Big Mech here, and it's time for that hobby video I was talking about, because as you can see, some things have changed behind me. Are you ready to take a look? Let's do it. <laughs> Alright, so for those of you that don't know what I am on about, uh, the last couple of videos I've been talking about my hobby area, which is behind me in the videos, um, not working real well, basically, because the sun has come out, and when the sun has come out, it glares through the window right onto my painting area. In fact, I'm going to uh, cut in some footage of the before right now so you can kind of get an idea what I'm talking about. All right, past Big Mac here to show you what I'm talking about with this. Here's the window. You can see it's actually sunny outside for once. And there's where I work. Which means when I sit down like this, I get all these harsh lights and shadows and stuff that are really annoying. But if I just scooched over here, it's not bad, hence the moving the desk from here to there. So as you see, it wasn't really ideal. Like I had this great big desk to paint on and right where I'm painting is where the sun was coming in. And it felt like if I just moved the whole stinking thing a little bit to the right, that would go away. So I went and did it. You want to see it? Let's look at it. Dun, 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 dun. I moved it. All right, here is another angle. And yeah, I know, ignore all the absolute garbage in here. This is basically a glorified storage room uh, that I happen to shove all of my hobby stuff in. And until I can get more storage figured out and more unpacking. This is what I'm living with. But one step at a time, that is just fine. And we are working on it. So what I did is I moved the whole desk here over. Uh, as you saw in the old footage, this little table used to be on this side. I'd have little armies on it and stuff. But that was actually really bad because um, I tended to stack things on it and stack things in front of it. So I couldn't actually get to it. Um, and it shoved the table all the way over. The big deal about all of this for me, honestly, was this light. You see, it's on this uh, little clamp here uh, that you need a lip on. And you can see this particular desk is solid uh, on this side. So you would need to be somewhere here in the middle uh, for it to clamp to. And by doing so, I wasn't able to connect all of my uh, paint holders together. These have little magnets in them so that they... Uh, Go together and uh yeah so the whole table was out from the wall those were offset it screwed up the whole space and they just kind of sucked it also meant that both of my lights uh that one and that one were on the same side so i had a bunch of directional light from the sun and two lights i couldn't even see anything from this side so now with this uh, i can crank this light a little bit over like so it provides a direction from this side same thing with this one from that side, and now I've got much more even light. And also, the sunlight that is coming in is uh, sitting kind of here instead of here, uh, so it gives me some more options there. And then, of course, I can always scooch my butt over and paint over here. So all in all, it has been a much-needed change. All right, so why is this such a big deal? Why do we even need to do a video about it for moving a desk a couple of feet? Well, it all comes down to your hobby space needing to be as um, not just efficient as possible, but as comfortable as possible in multiple ways. And I'm gonna explain. Basically what it comes down to it, when we are doing our hobbying, whether it's you know building new kits or painting things, um, having that workspace is extremely important. And the more the workspace fights against you, the harder you're going to work on whatever it is you're doing and frankly, the worse the outcomes are gonna be. Think about it, right? Put yourself in a uh, hypothetical scenario. Let's say that you are uh, painting, uh, you're doing it at your, uh, say, coffee table, right? So you're sitting on the floor, you've got uh, some newspapers spread out, and you are hunched up like this, trying to paint some things, and the lighting that you have is basically a TV in front of you and a little yellow lamp behind you. How well do you think you're gonna paint and how long do you think you're gonna paint for, 
right? I don't know about you guys, but old Big Mac here is getting pretty old. I can't sit on the floor, uh, you know, like a kindergartner very long before my back is just screaming at me and all these other things. Uh, so, you know, where you're sitting is important. The height of the table is important. Uh, what you have to rest your elbows and your wrists and stuff on is important. Um, your lighting is extremely important. So every one of those things is a factor in how long you can paint and how well you're going to do. I mean, it, think about it. If you are uncomfortable and your hands are going numb and you can't see anything, do you really think you're going to be putting out your like golden demon level work? Probably not, right? When you look at all of the, you know, the big YouTubers and Instagram people and whatnot, uh, people that paint you know, semi-professionally or professionally, this is like their gig, it's what they do. You notice one thing is common between all of their painting areas, and that is it's completely set up for them. They've got a really comfortable chair, they've got a really comfortable desk at a right height for them, uh, they've got all of their tools, they've got all their lighting, and they are able to just sit down and put 100% of their concentration into what they're doing. And so what was happening for me is even though I had this desk that was a good size and a right height and I had a good chair, my lighting was terrible, uh, and that was affecting my ability to paint. And so by moving the desk, I'm addressing that, getting my lighting a little better, so that hopefully I can paint more often, and when I do paint, paint a little better, back up to my best standard, instead of kind of the stuff I've been putting out recently, that like, it looks okay when I paint it, and then I bring it out and go to play a game with the Grotz, and I'm like, what the hell did I do to this thing? You know what I mean? And while we're talking about comfort and things like that, I want to address a couple of things. Uh, you guys have noticed in a couple of my videos, I've got one of these uh, kind of beanbag snake things for my wrists. Uh, old Big Mac has uh, some pretty serious nerve damage uh, from the military. Uh, thank goodness, not my painting arm. Um, but it means that certain activities are actually really hard for me. One of the things that got me back into the hobby was actually my physical therapist telling me I needed to do things with my hands, like serious hand-eye coordination thing, uh, in order to keep my nerves working properly. And so I got back into painting uh, just so I could be doing that. So um, yeah, even just holding the model and like having to manipulate it, like that is legitimately a form of therapy for me. So having things like this is really important. Uh, you know, if I'm resting my wrist on it, it helps uh, keep, you know, all the blood flow and all the nerves and whatever uh, aligned so that I don't get hurt with that. You'll also notice um, I often use paintbrushes that have a thicker handle. Right. So standard paintbrush, right? You hold that. Um, you really got to have a lot of pinch strength in that. Uh, and it gets pretty fatiguing after a while. This, even though it doesn't really look like much, that is extremely easier to hold. And, the, and that triangle... Uh, like really makes it where you don't have to like pinch as forcefully. So uh, painting with this, I can only paint for, um, you know, uh, maybe 10, 20 minute session before my wrist is screaming and my fingers are screaming and I literally can't do it anymore. This I can get more like uh, 30, 40 minutes out of uh, before I really can't do it anymore. So um, that's why I prefer these, even though they're not my favorite tips, uh, that ergonomics is really important. And other things too, you guys may have seen this chair uh, in a few of the videos. This is an actual uh, ergonomic uh, chair fitted to me and it, it's adjustable in about a zillion different ways. Uh, I've even got these um, like memory foam pads on the elbows, again for all the, the nerve stuff. So depending on whatever it is you've got going on or your health and well-being, Having things like this is really important. You know, you can sit in a hardback chair, you know, but for how long? You get something that's truly fitted for you that, uh, you know, is comfortable for you to sit in so that you can maximize uh, your hobby time. That's uh, really important. All these little changes add up. A little extra comfort, a little extra um, ability to keep going uh, without, you know, triggering, a, you know, a disability or just general fatigue, uh, age, things like that. They're all really important in your hobby space. All right, so I have showed you what's going on with the desk, uh, showed you kind of what was going on uh, in the before times and the change we have now. This lighting, uh, the time of day that I'm filming right now is very similar to yesterday. We're maybe a little bit cloudier than yesterday. Yesterday was like full sun, uh, but still it is like, I mean, you can see the beans and the painting area is way, way better. So. 
definitely happy with that. Obviously, you know, I've got shades I can draw too, but as you guys see, it's kind of dark in here when it's uh, <laughs> dark outside or I've got the shades down. So I definitely need to address more lighting in this room still, you know. Again, eyesight not the greatest, uh, so some more lighting will definitely help me extend my uh, hobbying time, and then I'll be able to paint more and do more, and obviously film more videos and all that stuff for the channel. But the same holds true for you too. If you are struggling to build your army, if you are struggling to paint your army, take a step back, look at your hobby space, and really think about like what are the things that are making you uncomfortable? What are the things that are making you have pain? What are the things that are making you have fatigue? And how can you fix them? Even if it's just a little thing like a, a little wrist rest. All right, that's all the uh, uh, hobby space talk for today. I got a couple of quick things before we end the video though. Uh, I did my unboxing the other day about my uh, terrain sets that I had gotten from uh, Games Workshop uh, and as well as the new, uh, where'd he go? There they are. <laughs> They're still sitting here from the video. Uh, the Big Daka and uh, Oofdeck Blackhawk. I mentioned that I got the bottle opener and it didn't come. It came in a box on its own like a week later. It was really weird. Uh, I don't, because they said they were shipping it all at once, and it just definitely totally could have fit in there. So I don't know if this just comes from a different um, shipper, being that it's, you know, an officially licensed thing and not, like, actually made by Games Workshop. But I did finally get it. Um, let me show you the keychain with the size. So it's uh, it, it's a good bit bigger. I got, I got them both on the same spot there. You can see it's uh, it's quite a bit longer. It's also quite a bit heftier it's at least double the weight of the uh of the the chopper keychain so yeah this this thing's got some heft to it this is pretty cool to make a pretty cool gift but yeah that that came in also i finished building the terrain uh if you want a video uh follow-up on terrain stuff i done a couple uh a couple of months ago uh, i think in december uh, doing terrain stuff before we started the Beastnag army. If you want to see uh, some terrain painting uh, or quick tips or even just a maybe a set out all the terrain I own and we talk about my terrain backlog. I don't know. If you're interested in any of that, definitely throw it down in the comments below because uh, I want to make the content that you guys want to see. And finally, the orc content definitely isn't going anywhere. Obviously, I am old Big Mech. I wear my red squig, drink my red squig, wear my merch. I got all my orcs up there. They aren't going anywhere. You are definitely getting more of that. In fact, here's a sneak preview. Oh, did you catch it? That's right. Big gas is getting done. And that is going to be the final announcement because this Wednesday, uh, it would be, what, let's see, 18, 19, 20, I think it's the 20th? Yeah, the 20th. Wednesday the 20th uh, is the Adepticon reveal party uh, for Games Workshop. So they'll be live streaming all of their Warhammer uh, 40k old world kill team all that stuff all the reveals from Adepticon uh, and just like we did for LVO I will be doing a live twitch stream so if you want to join me on that see if they put out anything for the orcs <laughs> we'll definitely be having a reaction to that so you can join me on twitch all the links are down below for all that stuff as well as the the t-shirt and all the other good stuff uh, anything you do, everything you click, everything helps uh, Old Big Mac and all of the other creators that we work with, including the Goff Rockers who do uh, our intro music uh, and so on and so forth. So super appreciate all of it. Hope to see you over on Twitch for that live stream. Definitely think about joining us over on Discord. It's totally free. Link in the description below where you would have seen pictures of most of this stuff already. Basically, everything hits kind of Discord first because... It, it's a forum. You can take a picture and you can talk about it while I'm filming. And so everybody there knows what's going on before this film actually gets made and edited and put out into the world and all that stuff. So anyways, if you want to join, you should definitely check that out. Uh, super huge thanks to all of my patrons. Uh, really appreciate each and every single one of you. Uh, we've got the last bit order kind of coming up now, and then we are getting ready to gear up for the next big thing. So stay tuned for more. Until next time. Wagon!